Welcome to another Jarro Vikings in St. Anglin adventure. Uh, next day, I'm here at Eyemouth after being at St. Abs in my last video. In my last video, I was just spinning for, well, I was trying to catch codling <laughs> with very little success, as you've probably seen. Just coalies and pollock about. So today, I thought I'd come to Eyemouth, got a bucket of peeler crabs. And see the bucket there. Probably about 30 and it's not full to be honest. And uh, I'm heading to a rock mark um, at Eyemouth where I sometimes do a bit of spinning and I lose a few fish because there's a big ledge in front of us. So I decided to bring the heavy duty gear today. I've got an Apollo Extreme rod which is a, a great rod for fishing into heavy kelp and rocks. And if I catch a big fish I should be able to pull it over the ledge. I'll show you the rod and reel set up a bit later and the gear I'm using once I get settled on the mark. And I've got a, a large reel, spinning reel, Daiwa BG800. I'll pull anything in that, even a 400 pound shark. So the fish have got no hope today. It's a bit sacrilege, I know. I do like uh, me spinning and lure fishing, but I thought I'd try something a little bit different today and hopefully pull out a couple of nice fish. You get uh, fish here, cod at this time of year, and a lot of them are uh, bright red or orangey colours, especially later in the year. Might be a little bit too early at the moment, there's probably a lot of fresh run fish about, maybe some wrasse, but we'll give it a go. So I'm really looking forward to it and uh, tight lines and thanks for looking in once again. And I'll get back to you once I'm on the mark. So I'm on the mark now and I'm hoping for a few codling, maybe some wrasse. So I'm using peeler crab for bait. This is a, uh, a shore crab. I'll show you. A shore crab like that, which I've peeled the shell off because these are ready to molt. How you know is by pulling a segment of the leg off like that. And can you see the brown meat underneath there? That's what you're looking for when you're looking for crabs who are about to peel. So they're ready to peel. So I've peeled all the shell off, putting quite a big bait on. I've elasticated it onto a 4 hook. I think that's a Sakuma Manta hook. And I'm using a pulley rig made from a 100 pound mono. Pulley rigs are great in the, the heavy kelp and rocks because when you're winding in, your weight comes to the surface first and the fish on your on your bait will come out last. So it's kind of saves you getting snagged. I'll try and explain a bit later if I get a fish on, you'll see. So I'm using a rotten bottom by Gemini, like a disc. Got a 20 pound mono on there to the weight. So if that weight gets snagged, when the disc hits the water, it releases the weight. And if that weight gets snagged, that 20 pound mono should break. And I will lose the weight, but at least I'll get a fish in. And my rig, hopefully. And I'm using a clip down rig, again by Gemini. It's just so I can get a bit more distance. My eyes are bad. Anyway, hook goes through there like that and when the disc hits the water, this disc here, it raises this 
mechanism up and releases the hook. Yes, yeah, so that's ready to cast out. Bit of a complex rig, a lot more than uh, I normally use, but we'll give it a go of the day. See if I can catch a decent fish. So that's ready to go out. I'm going to chuck it out probably about 80 yards. See if there's any fish out there. So I'm getting baits exactly within a minute of hitting the bottom. So there's definitely fish there. A good thumps. Oh, that was a good one. I see the bottom's really snaggy here. I didn't think I'd be snagged so quick. I've got this fish. This seems like a good one. A very good one. I'm gonna have to get it up quick though, because there's a big ledge out there. I think this will be a nice cut, for sure. Exactly what I came for. Quite heavy this one. Will be a nice fish. Yes, yeah, looks like a couple of pound. No bad one. Good start of the day. Very good start of the day. As I always say, happy days. And that was within about two minutes of casting out. Success there. Practically soon, soon as the bait hit the bottom. Nice cod in there. About, probably about three pound that. Two and a half, three pound. So uh, yeah, that's what I've come for. Absolutely dynamite peeler crab at this time of year and I would never get in that in on a lure so first cast get in catch some more okay, I've got that fish on Yeah, I just slipped that one, man. Look at that. Just caught it right in the lip. Perfect, that. So he'll go back, no problem. All I'm doing is I'm uh, leaving my bait on. I'm just adding small bits of crab to it, just to make it last. Obviously having plenty of success. Couple of pound. So, the rod and reel I'm using today, uh, this is a Grace Apollo Extreme. Length is 14 foot. Casting weight's 48 ounces. Uh, it's a, this is a beast of a rod, this. See, so you can easily, you could pull sharks in with this. No problem in South Africa. Uh, just what I really want today, fishing into really heavy, rough ground, pull them fish out. Real. Daiwa BG 8000 Loaded with 80 pound braid More strength to pull the fish out Great cranking power and a fast retrieve on this reel Really good reel Some people actually use them for skate fishing uh, To catch them 
hundred and odd pounders but I'll not be catching anything like that today I've just bought the really heavy gear as I say just because I really I want to pull the fish out and catch a few rather than snagging them up so yeah that's a setup tight lines so how do you peel a crab well first you have to kill it stick a knife between the back of its head there through its brain or wherever it is just be a bit humane take its legs off which I've already done just pull off its mandibles then pick away at the underside the carapace on the underside see there best you can this one's not quite ready it's a little bit tough Just try and take off all the shell you can off the legs. So that's all the, the legs stripped off there. Doesn't matter if you leave a little bit of uh, shell, fish aren't going to notice. This bit here, just pull it from behind there. That's that stripped off. So now you have two pieces here. That's that off. That's that off. Some people like to take the lungs out. Me, it doesn't really bother me whether I leave them in or not. But we'll take them out on this occasion. So that's the lungs in there. Pull the lungs out. Lungs on the other side. What's that? So now we'll just take the shell off the back. There you go. That's a beautifully done crab. Perfect. I'm just going to put the whole lot on my hook. Yeah, I'm just going to put the whole lot on my hook and bind it on with some elastic thread. The thread. If you notice I've left a little tag end on this knot. That just stops a crab flying up my hook when I cast out. So I just basically hook it through the once like that. And make sure the hook looks like it's standing proud. And then I just use the elastic thread. Give it a good binding on. Yeah, it's a good binding on. And hopefully, we'll pull a fish out on that. Like that, the hook standing proud. There we go. Ready for a fish. Well, yeah, we've got a beautiful day for it today. Seas flat, calm, crystal clear. Not much breeze about. Absolutely perfect conditions. I definitely think we'll catch a few fish today. Rods out. Trap set as they say. We'll see what happens. Get a few bites, yeah, again. Quite a bit of action today. What I'm waiting for is a good thump on the rod. Getting better. Good thump on the rod and I know the fish has probably got it and it's moving off. Then I'll strike and hook into it hopefully. I've had one good thump so far. The rest have been tentative, smallish bites. Fish on. Got to be 
is a bigger one. Yeah, another cotton. Yeah, anyway, so this is how the pulley rig works. I did have a, I did have a weight on there, but it got snagged up and I've lost it, but at least I get the fishing. So what happens is, anyway, this slides through there like that. Fish picks up the bait and it pulls the weight up. Pulls the weight up like that. You just kind of wind the fish in. And the, weight is out of the way of getting snagged. Well, anyway we'll get this one back. I want a couple of pound. Look like all fresh run fish what you normally catch in eye mouth a bit later in the season are golden or bright red fish. Hopefully we can get one of them today because they're unreal. And yeah they have really really spiky teeth. Spiky other than there. Uh, Normal cod, what I normally catch in the winter. Well, fish on finally. It's a good fight. Could be a rasses. This as well, I've got this big rod with us. And the hook. And it's up to the kelp. I think I've beat him now. Give a hell of a scrap that. Done. Staying deep. Looks like a codling. Oh yeah, that's a better one I think. It's a nice fat one this. There we go. Now that's the one I've been after the day. About time. Here we go. About a four or five pound of that. Lovely. Yeah, give a great fight that. Instead of casting a distance, I've just been lobbing it short now. I should have known. I should have known from the past when I've been fishing yeah. But yeah, beauty. Get in. The one. Just as I was putting that fish back there, it spewed up uh, some kind of fish. I'm not sure where it is. Anyway, whatever it's been eating. Whiten maybe. I didn't know you got whiten up here. Maybe it's another cotton. Mm, it's a mystery. Anyway, it just goes to show that they like to eat other fish. Bigger fish eat other fish, so goes to show you can catch them on the lures, which I know. Um, but I'm not lure fishing today, unfortunately. I'm just bait fishing, which may be fortunately because I'm doing okay now. Yeah, so I just had another good bite. I'm starting to get a bit of tide here now, which will help, it'll bring on the fish biting there. I see I'm waiting for that good thump. There we go. Trying to hang us up again. I'm really glad I brought this big rod today. I would have been struggling with the spinning gear. Oh. 
That's the type of fish I was talking about earlier with the red colour. They've been in the kelp for a little while. Yeah, it's a nice colour that one. See it looks like it's been in the kelp a little while that one. Turning red. Beauty. That's a nice fish again. Really good, really good to see. Quite red on it. Quite a bit of red. Um, we get this colour from living in the kelp. Amazing. <laughs> Turn into brilliant day now. We'll, we'll put this one back as well. So we'll put this one back. Hopefully goes back without too much bother. Was there? Uh, was quite deep, deeply hooked. But I've got hopes for it. It's still kicking. He's gone. Oh, it's lovely to see that. Yes. Yeah, so about 15 years ago, there was a book called The Coddling and Crouch. The Coddling Crouch doing the rounds, um, especially in the northeast of England. Uh, a guy who used to be on the NISA website, which is northeast Sea Anglin, uh, wrote a book. He was a teacher um, who used to live in Whitley Bay, I believe. Call him David Story. That's right, David Story. And the book is all about his fishing exploits in Eyemouth in the 1970s and 80s, uh, when the fishing was really, really good and I believe he used to go come up here uh, when he was a young lad with his father or might have been his grandfather I'll have to check that out and get a hold of the boot again but it gives you a great insight into uh, the, the type of fishing and how good it used to be in Eyemouth and it's a bloody good read and all there's some uh, tales there, some adventures so if you can get a hold of the Codlin Crouch I thoroughly recommend it and if you do get a hold of it um, Please let me know and send me a link. I'd love to read it again. I did have a copy of it, but I don't know where I've done with it now. Uh, I've lost it over the years. So if anybody does have a copy, please let me know. And if you could post it to me, that would be brilliant. I'll, once I've read it, I'll post it to you back. Or even just drop it off for us if, if you're local and you've got one. So... Great inspiration, David's story in the Codlin Crouch for many an angler, uh, including myself, who come up to Eyemouth in the 1980s and started fishing up here. So, tight lines, and uh, thanks for watching. And remember, if anybody has that book, please let me know about it. Well, wow, what a day, guys, eh? Really enjoyable today. Absolutely perfect weather. Stunning day for it. And to boot, I achieved my target. I caught some nice codlin, put five or six of them, up to about, I would say just under five pound. So, brilliant, really enjoyed it. And uh, big thanks must go out to Lenny's Tackle of South Shields for supplying me peeler crab at the last moment. Just decided to go fishing. And uh, sometimes he's a good lad, Lenny. He'll sort you out. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, I always enjoy making them. Uh, I don't make any money at all out of making these videos. Um, it costs me quite a bit of money. So if you do enjoy the videos, it's great if I get a, a like or a comment or new subscribers. So brilliant. 
tight lines lads and look forward to the next video